Hi, I'm John McCormack and welcome along to the next video in this series, SQL Server on Amazon RDS. This short video, we're going to talk about the benefits and limitations of running RDS and also cover some key AWS terminology. So before we get fully into the video series, I wanted to just go through a few basic terms that might be useful and uh, that may well come up. And if more things come up as we go through the course, then we will cover them as we go through. But this is really just some basics. So just for everyone's benefit, AWS is Amazon Web Services. It's a cloud computing company, um, similar to uh, Microsoft's Azure or the Google Cloud Platform. You can just pay to spin up services uh, in the cloud without using your own hardware. Um, there's a thing in AWS called a region, and there are 22 regions worldwide. There are sort of distinct geographical areas where there are more than one um, data centers, which are known as availability zones. Um, so there's a total of 70 availability zones. Each region has two or more, up to a maximum of six. And the purpose of having multiple availability zones is just to provide some redundancy. So if a whole availability zone was to go down and your application is set up to work across multiple availability zones, then you shouldn't receive any loss of service. EC2 is just Amazon's name for running VMs within AWS. It's um, available in Windows or Linux and you can run SQL Server on there. But today we are not going to be talking about that in detail. Just important to know the difference. S3 is object storage in AWS. So think of something like Dropbox. So you could upload files to S3, like a backup file, and it can sit there for as long as you need it. You could overwrite it with a new file. Uh, you could delete it, or you could archive it. But what you can't do is actually have files that are constantly being updated and amended. So it would be good for something like a database backup, but you couldn't have an active database file in S3. And RDS is what we're here to talk about. It's the Relational Database Service. Uh, it's a managed service offered by AWS. And we will be talking about the SQL Server. Now, there are multiple RDBMS options available, including MySQL, Aurora, uh, Postgres, and Oracle. Now, one of the benefits of using a managed service is that some of the work in heavy lifting gets done for you. So things like where your servers are actually hosted, the physical infrastructure, all the networking and power, and the capacity to scale up if needed, that is all handled by AWS. When you decide that you want a SQL Server RDS instance, then the installation is done automatically for you. AWS also take care of all the backups. So all you need to do is set a retention period for how long you want your backups uh, to be kept, and they will be done automatically. You can use those backups to do point of time uh, restores at any point throughout the lifetime of your backup retention period. Uh, one of the jobs that admins hate is patching um, operating systems and SQL Server itself. Well, if you have a managed service, that's taken care of for you. Uh, one of the other benefits is the automatic failover. So without really a lot of configuration on your part, simply by saying you want to enable your instance to be multi-AZ, so work across two instances, then you'll get automatic failover. And if that happens and there's an error with the original host, then that's all fixed on your behalf. So there's no more getting up at four in the morning to try and fix an issue with a server. Just puts another one up for you or fixes the one in place. With a managed service, there are some limitations. So you won't get the full feature set of SQL Server if you want to run RDS. One of the things that's not offered as well is Developer Edition. So you can use Express Edition if you want a license-free one, um, but they also have Web, Standard and Enterprise Edition. Um, there are various features that are not there. I've listed a few, but that's not exhaustive. So there's things like you can't use resource governor or replication or log shipping. There's no database mail, which 
isn't ideal for some people, but there are workarounds. There's no file stream or file tables enabled. Um, if you click on the link on the presentation, then it will take you to the features that aren't supported and you'll be able to get a full list there. Um, so that's it for the, the short presentation with slides. What we're going to do now is we're going to get into the business of actually creating our first RDS instance.